Thank you. <coughs> Before I talk about varroa, I just want to spend a minute or two on a couple of other diseases um, that we've got projects on. And we're just putting a project together at the moment on American fowl brood that uh, the industry is trying to um, eradicate. And um, the project we're putting together, which I'm sure we'll find a time to talk to everybody in the room individually over the next three days, I think she actually gives us the possibility of sometime in the future of flicking our finger and having it disappear completely from the country. We're also working on the Sima Serrana, which I don't think will make it go away, but I think we will, with some projects we're doing, we've got a really good chance of making most of the effects disappear. Now, Varroa, however, is in a different category. Um, it affects everybody, well, every beekeeper in the room, and everybody who buys honey off beekeepers because it affects the cost of production. Um, as you can see, it, get, it can get to really quite high densities, especially when you drop a bee into a jar of varroa. <laughs> I don't think that bee's having a very good day at all. Um, most of the varroa work around the world and the work we're doing here offer incremental changes. And uh, the trick is with all those incremental changes that they'll add together to give more and more effective control. The problem with controlling varroa is that we can get to the varroa that are on adult bees, and there's lots of things we can do there, but it's very hard to get at the varroa that are inside those cap cells. Um, we have to wait for them to get out. But there are some other things you can do. Well, the, and this is an oxalic acid treatment, and the percentage of varroa it kills. And as you can see, it only really kills about 40%. And the reason why is because most of those varroa are actually inside the cells. And we've got a lot of other products around there that work in the same way, and very, very limited by that fact. However, if you want to, you can create a period where there are no brood, there is no brood in your hives, or at least no cat brood. And this one's been popular around the world, mainly with hobby beekeepers, because it really doesn't have a commercial application, and that is to take your queen and put it in a cage. And if it's in a cage, it can't lay eggs, and it can't produce brood, and if you want to wait long enough, um, there will be no brood in the hive, and then you can treat with all sorts of things, because all the varroa are actually on the bees. But we were kind of looking at it and thinking, well, perhaps there's another way to achieve this. And if you look at the period of uh, cat brood, both in workers and larvae, for the workers, it's about 21 days. And for drones, the life cycle is about 24 days. And we did a trial a long time ago, and a number of the people in the room will have helped us with it to collect the data. And what we did was we looked at requeening with cells to see whether that would give us a broodless period. And these are cells that are just about ready to, to emerge. And um, what it did was... Yes, it did give us some broodless periods, but only about 63% of the colonies where you, where you requeen with cells have a broodless period. And that's not very useful unless you want to go through and hunt through every hive, find the ones that have got a broodless period, um, treat them and treat them differently to what you're doing with everything else. But just the last year, thanks to some funding from Plant Food Research and a, an independent trust who wanted to... Um, spend some money on varroa research, we thought we might try something different. And this is, and I'm guessing some of you will have heard of it, requeening with two-day-old two queen cells. Now, these are queen cells that have just about been kept over. And at this stage, the advantage with them is you can move them. You can put them in a vehicle and drive them around without damaging them. A few days later, if you picked out a cap cell from a hive, there's all sorts of ways you can kill it very easily. And that's why we wait till the cell is just about to emerge before we shift them around. But if you use two-day-old cells, and on the trials we're doing this season, they all have a capped, all have a period when there's no capped brood in the hive, so that all the bees are on the, um, on, sorry, all the varroa are on the bees themselves. And as far as using two dell cells, it's actually used by, not, well, I was going to say a number, several commercial beekeepers do this routinely. 
and they do it routinely because it's a good way for requeening colonies, not necessarily for, for varroa control. But if you want to incorporate varroa control in using two-day-old cells, because you've got a broodless period, if you want to go and then use something like oxalic acid, um, in this case, it's just our standard oxalic acid treatment we dribbled between hives, between the frames. Um, in this trial, we also tried to use ventilated floorboards because we have always have the hope that if you make varroa fall off our, our frames, they'll fall through a ventilated floorboard and can't get back in. So we included that one as well. Um, typical way we monitor varroa, if we're putting, after we've done our treatment, we put in apistan strips or Bavarol strips and sticky boards afterwards. Um, research, no matter how well you plan it, it doesn't always go the way you anticipate. Um, we manage that. We, in the Waikato, we get rain on occasion and um, sticky boards don't work quite so well when they're underwater. So we, we do have a little bit of gap in the da gap data at least. If we look at the um, if we look at the percent kill, and we look at those hives that we just treated with um, apistan, the apistan killed all the varroa in the hive, and you can see the sorts of levels that you can get. And um, there's one colony in the middle there that had 4,000 varroa in it. But then, if we want to look at the colonies we treated with oxalic acid and then treated, that's just one single treatment with oxalic acid, and then treated with Bavril. And this is the levels that you get. You study, because there are no, there's no brood in the colony, all the bees, all the varroa are on the bees, um, they're all, you can get at them all. Um, we also looked at our at mesh floors, which didn't make any difference at all, so answered that question for us. But what it demonstrated was by making just a small change in the management practices, at least, as far as requeening, we can incorporate, using, using two cells, we can get a brutus period, and we've got it in all our 34 hives. The question is whether we'll get it in every hive that you do it in, and I'm guessing that we will. And you know what day that brutus period is going to happen on day 25. So you can come in on day 25 and use oxalic acid, or any other treatment that takes varroa off adult bees. And its effectiveness will be very, very, very much better because um, you don't have to get into the cells. So for our oxalic, oxalic acid, um, with brood, it's around 40%. Um, without brood, it goes that single treatment goes up to about 90%. We've still got a couple of things we want to test because we think we can tweak that a little bit more. Um, but it allows for a very simple and cheap treatment to give you a one-off um, very high knockdown on Vrove if you want to incorporate it with um, requeening with cells. And I guess there's one point I do want to make because um, it's a really important one here, and it's this one here. Um, you, you always get to listen to people telling you how to control Varroa, and we'll get to, you'll get to listen to a few in this conference. There's a really t big temptation for beekeepers to take what they hear in a study and go and do it at home, which I absolutely recommend if you're going to do it on half an apiary at some stage. But what, we, what I see beekeepers doing all the time is finding, seeing another good idea and going and treating all their hives that way. And the danger of that is if it doesn't work so well in, as on your hives, in the experimental hives, you've got a large amount to use, to lose on the, in the process. So if you want to have a go at this, by all means have a go, but only use it on as many hives as you're prepared to use. Um, another good example I see is feeding pollen supplements in the industry. Um, I've yet to find a beekeeper, somebody can tell me afterwards, I have yet to find a beekeeper who's left one half of one apiary that they haven't fed pollen supplements to. Everybody just wins that, because we buy it, because we have to believe in it, we feed everything with it. Um, and the temptation is to do it with these varroa control products as well. So that's, the, I guess, the take-home message. I think there's some useful 
useful things we can do with a broodless period brought on by putting in two day old queen cells. But have a play with it by all means, but remember, just a play, don't go and treat everything this way. And I might stop there if there's any questions. Show us your um, Brower treatment. What you did on that slide? Uh, yes, you just want to look at the the Brower treatment, which I think I think I go backwards. Also, did you try any other methods of um, treating with oxalic acid, like vapors and stuff like that? Uh, the question was whether we tried any other me methods of using oxalic acid, like using vapors. No, we don't. Didn't we just use the drizzle method at this moment? We were really just looking to see whether the brutus period was going to give us a big help. Um, but you can imagine doing things like that or using essential oils, um, thiamol, um, things like that will also have a, a effectiveness um, in a brutus time. It's going to let me off very easy here. Yes? I've got a question. Um, is there a time of year that you recommend to do this broodless period? Um, yes. The, the problem you, you, we have with rower is in the autumn we get a lot of reinvasion, so that part of the, the length of your treatment in the autumn is not just to kill the rower in the hives, it's to kill all the other row that are coming in the front door. So it seems more fitted for a spring treatment rather than an autumn treatment. But it's a good, good question. Uh, just requeening with the two-day cell and then treating on day 25, is there any um, risk to the virgin queen? Because you wouldn't usually disturb the, the hive during that period? Well, the question was whether there was any danger to the virgin queen by disturbing it at that period of time. Um, we don't think there is. Um, our plans for the next year is to start looking at that. Um, we, we thought we'd do a, we can do these massive literature searches, which are really great. Um, so you, can, you don't have to do research, you can just find out everybody else who's done it. Um, we couldn't even find anybody who could tell us the success rate of uh, two-day-old queens versus, versus full queens or... Um, queens that are just about to emerge, but I have enough commercial beekeepers who convince me that it's, um, they get good results out of it. We're not expecting an effect, um, but we certainly will be looking for it. Thank you, Thank you.